The IRS denying tax-exempt status to a religious group called Christians Engage tonight, ostensibly because Bible teachings on specific issues are, quote, affiliated with the Republican Party. So let's discuss this recent ruling. The First Liberty Institute counsel, Leah Patterson, and the president of Christians Engaged, Bunny Pounds. Great to have you both with us. A pleasure. Thank you. Great to be here, Shannon. I want to read a little bit from the IRS letter denying your tax exempt status. It says this, you instruct individuals on issues that are prominent in political campaigns and instruct them in what the Bible says about the issue, how they should vote. Uh, these issues generally are associated with political party platforms. These facts preclude you from exemption under the IRS section 501c3. And um, Bunny, they talk about the fact that a number of people with your group have been or currently hold positions that involve the GOP that you once ran for Congress as a Republican. And they say there's just too much there to say that this is a neutral, nonpartisan uh, institution. So what do you say? It's crazy, Shannon. You know, uh, the former president's wife, Michelle Obama, has a nonprofit initiative for voter mobilization to minorities, to um, young people. Everyone um, that comes out of office has a nonprofit, and they're talking about public policy issues. All we do with Christians Engaged is engage the church, the body of Christ, to pray for their elected officials, their city, state, and nation, to learn to vote in every election, and to engage in the political process. All we're talking about is civic duties, and it's, it's really crazy that this letter was even written. And this is another part of the letter. They say, while you educate voters on what the Bible says about issues, your educational activities are not neutral. The topics typically are affiliated with distinct candidates and specific political party platforms. So, Leah, how do you get around that? Do they say if you're, if you're hinting at or supporting specific parties or candidates, you're not nonpartisan? Well, the issue here is that the IRS considers uh, the education based on biblical teachings to be a political campaign activity. And that's just not correct. The, the tax code actually protects the ability of 501c3s to advocate for their beliefs on public policy issues as long as they're not going around endorsing candidates. And that's not what is happening here. So, Bunny, I guess then that's the, that's the rub that they say if you're teaching biblical principles that that's partisan, uh, where do you go from here? It's crazy. We were so thankful for our friends at First Liberty to take this appeal. We are a small nonprofit. We're, you know, have been operating for the last 18 months. But, you know, for the sake of our donors, for our supporters, the people of Texas that support us around the state, it was an incredible thing for First Liberty to take this case, to appeal this to the IRS. And, and we're excited to see what they have to say in response. Yeah, so Leah, what, what is that process like and when do you think you'll have a determination of the next step? So we'll be working through the IRS's administrative appeal process over the next few months and we're optimistic about the result, but if not, we could go to federal court. Yeah, and what do you think your option is there, Leah? What's your best argument on the legal front uh, for overcoming this determination? Well, the best argument is that the IRS's decision that Bible teachings are affiliated with the Republican Party is contrary to the IRS's own regulations and to the constitutional protections of free speech and free exercise of religion. So, Bunny, uh, if this doesn't work out, will you continue with these efforts? Um, what motivates you? What do you do next? Well, our motivation is to find the Awakening Church and plug them into processes of prayer, voting, and engagement. We do that from a nonpartisan point of view. We, we talk about how we're here to minister to all Texans, all Americans. It's so important for the church to rise up and be salt and light in our nation, and that is not precluding politics. We should be active in business, media, culture, and politics is just one of those things. And I like to tell people, we don't leave Jesus at the 100-foot marker, we take him into the ballot box. So to say that we can't well, instruct Christians on biblical values as it relates to voting habits is just crazy. Well, Bunny and Leah, thank you both very much. Please keep us updated on this case. And I like what you said about praying for your leaders, regardless of who they are, what party they are. I think we're called to do that, and it's on my list every Amen. morning. So hopefully everyone can agree on that. Uh, Leah and Bunny, thanks. <laughs> thank thank you, you so much.